born to a family of samurai. He brought Japanese cinema to a worldwide audience. and inspired some of Hollywood's finest moments. A retrospective of Akira Kurosawa's finest films begins with an arena profile featuring exclusive interviews and unseen footage. Kurosawa season starts Saturday from 9 on BBC Knowledge. For information on how to get BBC Knowledge, Call us on 08700 100 789 or go online at bbc.co.uk slash digital. It's a world that has no limits. You can just go wild in your fantasy. Princess Diana, Madonna, Elizabeth Hurley, Posh Bites. He sees me sexier than other people. Naomi Campbell, Meg Ryan, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Janet Jackson. He always draws something out of me that other people don't. Vogue, Versace, Gucci, Burberry, Lacroix, Valentino, Paul Smith, Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein. Discover the man behind the lens. Mario Testino, Diana's favourite photographer. Wednesday at 10.35 on BBC One. And now on BBC One, it's question time. Tonight on Question Time, the Government Chief Whip, Hilary Armstrong, John Burko, Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Broadcaster and author Muriel Gray, Dr. Tom Shakespeare, genetics expert and campaigner for disabled people, and the Reverend Sandy Miller, founder of the charismatic Christian Alpha course, which now operates in over 130 countries. Thanks so much. So it's Sunderland tonight and good to be here. And I think it's the first time Question Time's actually been to Sunderland, so it's a treat for us. And as ever, the panel don't know the questions that are going to be put, only I and the questioner. And the first questioner is Pam Wortley, who is a GP. Pam. Does the Rose Addis case indicate that the health service is in terminal decline or that the politicians will go to any length to score a point? Muriel Gray. Um, a bit of both. I wouldn't think that it's terminal decline. I think the first thing to say about that case is it's so regrettable that Mrs. Addis was at the centre of that. Um, it's quite right and proper that her son should have written a letter of complaint. But unfortunately, members of the public often don't realise the genie they take out of the bottle when they bring in the media. <coughs> Excuse me, a really bad cold, be coughing all night. Um, and I think that the fact that she's being used as political football is very regrettable. Having said that, the other awful thing about it is that it's anecdotal. Now, my family, both old and young, just through very unfortunate circumstances, are very heavy users of the NHS. And I can sit here tonight and reel off uh, half a dozen horror stories that make you put your hands over your mouth. Similarly, I could reel off dozens and dozens of stories about wonderful people in the National Health Service going an extra mile to bring comfort and help uh, to members of my family. Neither of those polar opposites are of any remote interest to, to the overview of the National Health Service. Anecdotal things don't get us any further. What we need to do is decide that the government has to have uh, a very cool and calculating look at the health service, not anecdotal silliness in the Houses of Parliament scoring points off each other, because it is in trouble. Now, one of the great disappointments to me is that this government was voted in on a visionary ticket it now is in the position of not having any effective opposition at all, uh, forgive me, uh, because therefore that's a, that's a mandate to do whatever it likes. Now, I would like to see some vision put into practice. Now, Blair, I think, is probably a very decent man, but he has the opportunity now to try and fix the National Health Service, which is a very dirty, rolling up sleeves job, and it doesn't get headlines, and the effects of that won't be seen for perhaps decades. And instead of that, he appears to be choosing to be going for the main headline, show business, getting the global headline. And I think that's very sad. There's work that needs to be done. I'd just like to say okay, finally, well, it's no point right, I would uh, like to say that what this has done that saddened me is, 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 is making the morale of the people who work in the National Health Service even lower. Because let me tell you, it's not for safety. 
they don't People who work there are not doing it for status or money or part. They're there because they want to, and the majority of them, a few bad apples aside, do an absolutely brilliant job for very little time. John Burko, is it a case of the health service in terminal decline or politicians point scoring? I certainly hope that the health service isn't in terminal decline, but what is clear is this. It's over-centralised, it's highly bureaucratic, and it's deeply <coughs> inflexible. We also need to underline the central facts of this case. Mrs. Addis's daughter is a constituent of the leader of the opposition, Ian Duncan Smith. The daughter and her family complained to the hospital. They made representations to the Department of Health. They didn't have their calls answered. They were getting nowhere. They approached their constituency member of parliament and their constituency member of parliament has every right and some would say a duty to champion the cause of the constituent in the House of Commons. That's what Ian Duncan Smith did. And for Alan Milburn and Tony Blair to complain really is barefaced hypocrisy. It was Alan Milburn who said to the Evening Standard that the family's account was fiction. He didn't speak to the family. He didn't do Ian Duncan Smith the courtesy of speaking to him either. And since what we've seen, in this case and two others heavily publicised over the last 24 hours, is the government shamelessly breaching the accepted and traditional right of confidentiality of the patient. Blair and Milburn have much explaining to do, many questions to answer. Their behaviour and their performance are contemptible. Hilary Armstrong. Well, John, the guidelines that have been followed were in terms of revealing what was said the family said things to the paper, the guidelines which then say it is the right of the National Health Service to factually correct anything that appears without going into confidential uh, matters, but to put the facts on the record. Those guidelines were introduced by the last major government. And those are the guidelines that the hospital followed. There is nothing that has come from any politician on our side, on the Labour side, from Alan Milburn, from Tony Blair, which goes beyond what was already in the public domain. And what we are seeing is the Tories once again trying to run down the health service so that they can then come in and privatise it. I, are, you saying, got, are you saying, Mrs. Hmm. Sir, are you just saying that the... Just to clarify the point, um, the Prime Minister asked uh, the leader of the Conservative Party to what he called withdraw his allegation. Are you saying that the treatment of Mrs Addis was impeccable, was right, that there was no problem with it? I am saying that the uh, account that the hospital uh, put is one that I don't think should be dismissed out of hand, that they believe that despite all the pressures, and I'm not saying the health service perf is perfect, Goodness me, the years and years of underinvestment in the health service, no wonder it's taking time to get things right. But the people who are working in the health service are working their socks off. They are doing everything to try and improve the health service, and we're giving them more flexibility and more money so to do that. Is it wrong to bring up a case like this? Though? It isn't wrong, but you've got to be very careful how you did do it. We learnt that in the 92 election, and at that time, I might say that Liam Fox, the current um, uh, Tory spokesperson, said that we were despicable for having raised any um, individual... Uh, Jenkins' ear war. Something Jenkins like that, Jenkins yeah, Jenkins yeah, Jennifer's ear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that, yes, there are problems in some of our hospitals. I have to tell you that the family <laughs> tonight have met with the doctors, and they are saying, we really want this cooled. And I think it's about time we did cool on the individual cases and we go to making sure that we put investment and reform into our health service on a sustained basis. And we keep that going so that we can get back to being confident that we've got the very best health service that works for patients and that's free of the, at the point of need. And not what John's planning which is charges, yes. which is, well, why Wrong. is Ian Duncan Smith talking about charges for, uh, uh, for GPs? Why is Ian Duncan Smith talking 
about bringing overall spending on uh, public services down to 35% okay. of GDP. Well, that's what he said 10 days ago, okay. and right. that well, let, will let, mean 60 wrong. billion of cuts. And we will not get the health service that we need. Name All the right. speech. I'll, tell me John the date. Where was it said? Now let's just go on with the question we were asked. I want to go back to the questioner. Uh, what do you think's been going on? Is it is it uh, politicians having a, a merry scrap over the health service, or is it something fundamentally wrong with the health well, service? Well, it seems that like they're having a bit of a scrap at the moment, which I think is very sad. I think it's very sad for this particular lady to be um, named in this way. Mm -hmm. But we do know that there are problems in the health service. Those of who, as, who work there are very concerned that we aren't always able to give of our best. We know what more could be done. And it is about underfunding over very many years. But I think, Hillary, also you've got to get to grips with the fact that the only way to fund it is to put enough money into it, and that yeah. probably means raising tax. Yeah. And I think... Hillary, Hillary Armstrong, you're nodding, well, your, you're nodding we, your head when, at the proposal to raise tax. Well, were, you, were you intending we, to nod at that, or were you nodding we, at something else? What we have said is that we know the health service needs sustained investment over a period of years. It's no good putting it in one year and taking it out the next year, which is what was happening. But that's why we've got to get an economy which we know we can sustain and where we've got stability in that economy so that we can get that sustained investment. The rate, so sorry, want, raising tax, which is the important well, point that the GP raised, said you've got to raise tax. Do you well, agree with her we or not? Have, we have collected more tax in recent years because we've got more people back to work. And it is by keeping that stable economy and getting people into work and actually making sure that, and, and we have said we want a debate about whether people will be prepared to pay more taxes in order to improve spending in the health service, okay. along with reform. All right, Sandy. But we want to work with you on that. Sandy Miller. Well, I think, once again, it's an example of this dreadful sort of, I'm not a party political animal, as you can imagine. This dreadful sort of boo-hurrah that goes on all the time. You are awful, we're very good, no you're not, yes you are. I'd love to suggest, it's not beyond the wit of intelligent people, is it, to get their heads together to ask the doctors and the nurses who actually run the health service how they can help. I would love both parties to get together and do something to raise the morale of the nurses and doctors by telling them, as Hillary started to do, what a wonderful job they are doing and how totally dependent we are on them. Uh, I've got a young friend who's just left nursing. She's extremely nice. I know it's a, a, an anecdotal story, but that's all, all I have to go by. She's got to leave. She cannot stand the hours. She's physically ill with the work that they have to do. May I make two suggestions? Raise the morale and find the money. I don't mind where the money comes from. If it comes from the private sector or the public sector or anywhere else, let's get the health service running and the doctors and nurses working reasonable hours and the patients and getting what they want. I'd love, actually, Duncan, uh, Ian Duncan Smith to have taken it up privately with the Prime Minister, not in the House of Commons at all, and seen how he could have got on behind the scenes. But the woman in Time the media uh, and the opposition stop bashing the health service because it undermines the staff in it and undermines public confidence in relation to using the health service. I agree. And, and what should they do when a case like this comes up and somebody does complain to an MP? should be allowed to be investigated by the organisation, the trust in concerned, and then if there's anything, yeah. indeed, that has to come out, it should come out then, but not at the point before the trust can actually say their piece. And we only get one side of the story. OK. The, the woman in, in scarlet there in the, in the middle. Why was... Ian Duncan Smith allowed to bring it up in Parliament and bring it into the public domain and break that patient's confidentiality. Right, you think he shouldn't have done that? And the woman at the very back there in the, in the, in the centre of the gallery? gallery? You, you, madam, yes. Yes, I'm just wondering why it is a political issue because the basis of any civilised society is its health system and its education system. Surely both political, oh, all political parties should agree we can only move forward through having a good system that's out of the political arena. Okay, and, and the man in the blue shirt in the centre there? I believe that Mr. Burko's uh, opposition, as it 